and do like a little series on pain management because that's what we're really dealing with right now for me. So it's chronic pain and it goes on and on, which all of you guys I know suffer from pain also. So I hope you benefit in, from this because it's going to be more than one video. It's going to be as this process um, goes along. Um, it was March last year from March to December. I had 15 compression fractures in my back. So that was 15 um, surgical procedures. Uh, they had to go in and as kyphoplasties. And, uh, you know, they drill holes into your bone and your spine, and that's causing me significant pain. Prior to the compression fractures, I lived at a level six pain. And um, that was with my pain medication and everything, and it was a level six. That's as good as it got. And, you know, I just... That's what my life was, and you know, waiting for the day that someday it'll be even lower. And uh, now, with all the compression fractures, everything hurt, hurting in my back, I still have my lupus generalized pain. And I'd say it's probably at a seven to an eight because of my other pain flaring. Um, my back pain, like right now sitting here, I'm moving my arms and stuff, it's going up. But I live at an eight, or the lowest it goes is an eight. Any kind of movement, I'm at 10. And I've been doing that since March last year. And it's just time that I've got to do do something else. My quality of life is basically nothing. I'm in the hospital bed. Um, you know, uh, I have to have help to get up out of bed and to get me to the bathroom. You know, my lunch has to be my everything. Basically, has to be done for me, and I try to do what I can do. Um, so I need to get the pain under control. And they brought up, uh, they said, have you ever thought about the pain pump? And I said, I didn't know you were allowed to have those at home because you know the ones in the hospital and you push the little button and it'll give you a bolus shot of pain medication like every 10 or 15 minutes you can push it. And they go, oh no, that you know, that you can't have at home, but there's the intrathecal pain pump, which is surgically implanted into you. And the doctor, you know, that, um, programs it and it releases medicines automatically. And it's like, no, we had never heard of that. You know, 13 years in or 12, 11 or 12 years in to, with systemic lupus, stem cell transplants, everything, you know, nobody has ever brought this up until this point. And I believe it's due to they had to rate me as terminally ill when I was released from the hospital this last time. And, um, which I'm not, I'm not going anywhere. They can say what they want and do what they want but I'm not going anywhere, um, not anytime soon. I'm going to live my life to the fullest, and I'm going to see my son get married one day. I'm going to have a daughter-in-law, and I'm going to have grandchildren, and life is going to be golden.
It's going to be, uh, that's what I'm looking forward to. I'm looking forward to even to be able to clean my house and to clean out the garage. I'm looking forward to being able to go cook a dinner, to make a sandwich. Um, I'm looking forward to the day when Dwayne gets home. I'm not laying in a hospital bed in my pajamas. <laughs> you know, that I'm up, got my hair fixed, my makeup on, nice clothes on, you know, just I'm ready for life to be back and that we can go do things, go sit down and eat in a restaurant and just go on a vacation. I want a vacation so bad, so bad I want a vacation. So I've got to do something to get this pain under control and all my doctors said that that and they that that is what is priority. My pain management doctor, because I'm on such high levels of, of pain medication that, and you know, it's not keeping the pain under control. He recommended the pain pump and because the delivery system, you know, oral medications, you have to take it and it goes through your whole body and you know, your liver and all that and you know, it does all that just to help a pain that might be right here. And then he, but this, it goes directly into your spine. So it's hitting you with the medicine that you need directly. And it's, you know, so it's bypassing all of your bloodstream. He said a little bit might get in there, but other than that, you know, your liver is being bypassed. And you know, we have problems with chronic pain with our medications, with our liver counts being high because of the medications. So hopefully this will help it go down. And I said, you know, it's a very serious, you know, procedure. And he goes, well, continue to take your time. And he goes, um, why don't you get some, get a second opinion? And we ended up getting two different second opinions. And both of them said that my kind of pain, oral medications just doesn't work for it that this is what this pain pump is made for my kind of pain it's bone pain upon movement one they said it's worth the try and what they mean worth the try is there's several steps that you got to go through before you get the actual placement of the pump and um, the first one I, well I had my my consultation with the surgeon he was very kind very considerate and he explained everything and the first step is is that we have to, I have to get a psychological evaluation just like when you have um, get your social security disability you have to get a psych evaluation this is the same thing except mine was seven or eight years ago so it's too old so I have to get a, a new yeah. one and she said it's like a, almost 400 question test yeah. you know you gotta fill in the little circle, circle. Yeah. and I do that and I also meet with the doctor ready to move forward you know and all that or otherwise if it, he says no I don't recommend it my surgeon's office at that point can schedule me for the trial period now they do the trial period um, to make sure it's going to work and because you don't want to go through this three it's a three hour surgery you don't want to go through it and it not work um you could and he explained that a lot of patients go in there and they have have such you know it's like a last resort and they have high hopes okay this is going to work you know i hope you know this is my last chance and i know this is going to work he said we cannot do this based upon hope you know we got to know it doesn't really work and he goes it's gonna to have to be a significant aha uh -huh, or oh my god this is awesome you know my pain's gone not a it's a little bit better he said it, at that point no you know it's not the right thing for me so I gotta get scheduled for that and there's two different ways that it's done and um, the first one is you go in and it's just what an outpatient. You're in there during the day. They go sedate you and they put the epidural 
uh, they cut a little incision in your back and place the epidural in. And then through the course of the day, they'll give you different amounts of medication and to see what, ha what amount, if it's going to help, um, what amount they'll need to start me out on. And I said, well, you know, if I, I said, I won't be laying down all day. Well, I, because I lay down, I'm in an eight. Like when I get up to move around, you know, it's unbearable, excruciating. I cry, it's a 10. And he said that they'll have me up moving around to mimic the pain so they know where and what to do. And so they do that during the day, then they take it out and you go home. And you know if you if it's gonna work or not. And the second one is um they keep you in the hospital and it's a like a two to three day deal um and that's what my uh two second opinions recommended um because of my medic uh, my medical condition and so we don't know what we're going to go up against because the doctor said once we get up there medicare is going to be the deciding factor because they've only been letting people do it on a day basis he goes but if we get up there and we need you to stay in for two to three days he goes you'll stay in two to three days you know medic well, medicare will do it if if it's medically necessary once we and then I, I had asked him, I said, well, how long after that do you go in and out, do the actual surgery? And he said, it'll be anywhere from two to six weeks. He goes, we need to wait two weeks to make sure no infection sets in, which, you know, we deal a lot with infection with me and also based upon his schedule. So that could bring me clear up to the 1st of April before I have the pain pump. And once you get the pain pump, it's not immediate relief. It takes time for them to get everything at the sweet spot. And plus, he'll say, like, here's the medicine in the pain pump, and I'm still on my oral meds. They'll start weaning me off the oral meds, raising the pain pump, and, you know, get hopefully get rid of these totally. And um, so, you, you know... After you get it, it's even a process to find the right sweet spot. So, got a lot to do, a lot to think about. Um, Let me show you. The pain pump is actually the size of a hockey puck. And he showed me one yesterday. It comes in two, two different sizes. And he, one, there, one is just slightly thicker than the other, but it's not like a noticeable difference. And so he said, one's like holds 40 milliliters, the other one holds 60, and that he would go with the 60. Would mean less um, trips to the doctor for refills. And it's surgically implanted. They usually put the uh, the disc, the hockey, you know, hockey puck size. It usually goes on your left or right front lower abdomen. Um, but now they said they started doing it on your back side and he put it underneath my clothes and you know my jeans wasn't hitting it and you know you're not don't feel like you're sitting on anything because it's still high up, up so there's nothing there to you know hit it or rub against it or anything and I told him I said I definitely don't want it in a position where my pants are going to be around it or because with the sports I always have a problem because no matter where they place it, that darn seat belt that goes right across it, you know. And so, like, I want to make sure the placement of this is going to be comfortable. And because it's usually a lifetime deal. And um, so, but every five to seven years, they have to go in and change out the pump because the battery dies as a five to seven year li life and see where they're right where they're putting the pump that's actually on the front side but they're going to place it down here on me and then they got a short uh ways to go to go to the spinal sac 
and then they're gonna thread it up to my T4 level, which is basically the bra line, and that's where the medication will be delivered, and it'll go up and down my spine. And um, this way, if they did it on the front side, they have to tunnel all the way around with that uh, catheter to get there. So this is the path of leaf resistance. further we go, the more peace I'm getting about it, because it literally, literally did scare me. And um, so, we, you know, one doctor told me, both, both of them, all of them, <laughs> said it's nothing to worry about, you know, that, it, that it'll be fine. And if I get one of those spinal headaches, they'll just go in and do a blood patch and, you know, it'll go away from there. And so that the infection, my oncologist here, he's worried about infection. And he said, not about right when you're having surgery or right then, because he got, they're going to be pumping you full of antibiotics and everything. He goes, so you'll be fine. What he's worried about is like a year out, two years out. If my blood gets infected again, again, which it does easily, because we know how many times I've been septic, and that's not even counting the times I had bacteremia or septicemia. And those are the beginnings of sepsis, but it was just caught before it went into sepsis and organ failure with it. So it's nothing to play around with. And he's, he's the only one that had any um, resistance to me doing this. Um, and I told the surgeon, and he goes, well, once we get to the point of doing this, he'll have a one-on-one -on -one with my oncologist, and he'll do whatever my oncologist um, tells him, like, maybe I might need to go in for an extra IVIG, you know, what antibiotic does he want him to be using, you know, what do we need to do, you know, to be prepared and to make it the best um, possible outcome. So it's good to know that he's not afraid to take another doctor's orders. So with that, I'm going to say I'll see you guys in the next video.